Welcome back. It is a fine Friday indeed here on Liquid Lunch, Newsmax TV's new show. We're coming to you from our downtown outpost, Newsmax Studios. We're at the Question Tequila Studios. And, uh, you know, earlier in the show, uh, I talked about today being the beginning of a very holy season for Christians, especially I'm Catholic. Um, we had on uh, Martha Bonetta and Pam Bondi last week, Senator Trent Lott. Uh, Ambassador Richardson from, from the Vatican talking about how there are American citizens currently being held in Kuwait because they're being, uh, they're, they're, they're basically demonstrated that, that they were Christians. So uh, Christianity seems to be under attack everywhere. Um, and I talked about earlier in the show that everybody puts on the ho costumes for Halloween, but it's really to celebrate the eve of the Hallows where uh, this great spiritual season starts. And uh, joining us today is Professor Mark David Hall. He's a professor at George Fox University, and he's the author of this book, Did America Have a Christian Founding? Thank you for joining us. We are trying to keep Americans reminded from time to time, me in particular, that the whole country was founded on faith and, and Christianity, and it says in God we trust on our money and all this other stuff. Um, Seems like more and more the left side of things wants to dull that out, like it doesn't mm -hmm. exist anymore. Um, but did America have a Christian founding, is the question. Absolutely it did. What I argue in the book, I set up each chapter with about a dozen quotations from prominent scholars saying, of course it did not. America did not have a Christian founding. America's founders were deists who created a godless constitution, and they wanted the strict separation of church and state. And I show that all these myths, by which I mean a false story, are simply false. And I argue on the, in the affirmative that America's founders were influenced in very important ways by Christian ideas and ideas developed within the Christian tradition of political reflection. Quite amazing. I mean, that's about as good as I've ever heard it said. And uh, well, thank you. you might want to go out and uh, check out this book. You, not might, you should. Did America Have a Christian Founding? If you care about America and you care about faith in any God, you should understand how important Christianity was in the foundation of our country. Well, so whatever you talk about the foundation of the country, you can't have that conversation without talking about Thomas Jefferson. Obviously, he, he wrote the Declaration mm -hmm. of Independence, served in the first president's cabinet, and then was our third president himself. Uh, didn't he say that there should be a wall of separation between church and state? He did. He wrote that in a letter to the Danbury Baptist in 1802. And here's where the Supreme Court has really led us astray. In 1947, in Everson versus Board of Education, they in effect said this, we must interpret the First Amendment religion clause in light of the founders' views. Thomas Jefferson and James Madison equal the American founders. Thomas Jefferson and James Madison wanted the strict separation of church and state. Therefore, we have as a constitutional requirement the strict separation of church and state. The problem with the syllogism, and there are many problems, is that there's almost no evidence to support it. In fact, you have to go to these fairly obscure documents, uh, obscure in the day, not so much now, letter, Jefferson's letter to the Danbury Baptist. And one reason this is problematic, and there are a number, but at least one reason is Jefferson played no role in drafting the First Amendment. He played no role in ratifying it. So why we would go to him as a definitive source for what it means is beyond me. Uh, so when we talk about America having a Christian founding, we're talking about the, the Constitution, not necessarily the 13 years before the Constitution or the early days of the Republic after the Constitution was ratified. I considered three different possibilities. First, the early colonial settlements, but that's a pretty easy argument. Second of all, I do look at the war for American independence, and I argue that there are good reasons. I, I think that this is justifiable as a matter of um, the Bible or the Christian just war tradition. But then I do focus in on the Constitution and Bill of Rights. Many prominent scholars say things like America's Constitution is godless, by which they mean it doesn't reference the deity, which is more or less true, only in the dateline in the year of our Lord, 1787. But I contend instead that it was influenced, the founders were influenced in very significant ways by their Christian convictions. The fact that humans are creating the Imago Dei, the image of God, that humans are sinful, and I give several other reasons why I think this is the case. Now, and this book's uh, sort of an extension of a lecture you gave nine years ago with the same <clears throat> title, Did America Have a Christian Founding? This lecture kind of lit up the world, really struck a chord with folks. Uh, why do you think this took people, this struck such a chord with people? 
I think part of the problem, as I've suggested before, is that so many scholars and popular authors are arguing the exact opposite. And they're saying, no, America clearly did not have a Christian founding. They were deists, creating a godless constitution. You have some popular authors arguing the sort of thing that I'm arguing, but these authors have few academic credentials, and sometimes mm -hmm. they overstate their case. Right, you're the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. We only bring on the real guests who know where the rubber meets the road, as I've said many times. But let me ask you this. You said the pre the pre-Declaration uh, of Independence times, the colonialization times. I'm a little more simpleton at history. <laughs> yeah, I doubt that. Um, but the Pilgrims, right? Pilgrims mm -hmm. came over on the Mayflower, like we mm -hmm. all learned in second grade, and uh, they were Puritans. But they were highly faithful and religious people when they landed at the Plymouth Rock. Absolutely. And here I think even the most secular of historians want to argue with me about the Pilgrims and the Puritans. It becomes a little messier when you get to the south and the mid-Atlantic colonies. And so here I provide a bunch of evidence to suggest that even in tolerant Quaker Pennsylvania, they had religious tests for office, they thought the government should promote virtue and, and punish vice. And I'm not saying all these things are good things. In fact, many of them are bad ideas that we should repudiate. But still, these were serious people of faith trying to create a Christian commonwealth as they understood it. And um, why is this relevant today in the 21st century? If we have a constitution that most people recognize the First Amendment gives people freedom of religion, um, whether America had a Christian founding or not, what does it matter today if we want to be atheist, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, any religion we want? Why should we care about this now? Well, certainly, first of all, I certainly think the First Amendment protects your right to be a Christian, an atheist, a Muslim, or Jew, and that's one of the great things about it. I, I do think it matters with respect to establishment clause type issues. Mormon too, sorry. Mormon, all sorts of anything Romney. under the sun. Anything under the sun. Pierre Delecto. <laughs> <laughs> so for you instance, might notice, I'm sorry, but you might yeah. notice that we have a little looser spirit here. Yeah, we no. have some spirits here. I hope I'm that doesn't tea. offset the book. No, but Jesus can turns I ask you this? You, I know you did tequila. some like... And I want to answer my question. Crazily either. deep investigation, the <laughs> talk. Um, but did America have cocktails at the Christian founding? Like, did the forefathers take down some distilled goods? Absolutely. They yeah, did. quite a bit. Really? Yeah, absolutely. So, like, in, in your research, you find that there were grains and other things that... There are some famous studies that show, for instance, what sort of alcohol George Washington ordered from Mount Vernon, and it's quite a bit. Now, really? it wasn't just for him, it was for he and his friends and the guests and that sort of thing. Yeah, but the founders are not teetotalers, almost so none of the them. the colonial, colonial Americans in the 1770s consumed three and a half gallons of alcohol per year. That's that is a week. <laughs> you, but that is double the modern rate. So, uh, right. Professor Hall, tell me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. John, I'm not even really drinking. Before this John, we, we, these are all props. Before you know? John yeah. tobacco us, just finish your, your thought. Um, why does this matter today? Well, it certainly matters for establishment clause issues. So, a couple months ago, the U.S. Supreme Court decided a case involving a, a World War One era cross put up by a county to memorialize the dead men from this county. The Freedom From Religion folks and the American Humanist Association said this has to go. We cannot allow this 1925 cross to remain on, on, on public land. And this case was litigated. And of course, the only argument they can possibly make is the Establishment Clause argument. And one of the things I show is that there's absolutely no good originalist understanding of the First Amendment, of the Establishment Clause specifically, that would require the removal of this cross or the re require the removal of the Star of David from Ohio's Holocaust Museum Memorial or anything like that. Um, the, the First Amendment means what it says. We won't have an established church. By extension now, the states won't have established churches, but lots of other things are permissible. This is, this is great stuff. Uh, if you ask me, America did have a Christian founding, and you got to go check out the book that answers that question in so many ways. Did America have a Christian founding? And uh, the next time you come on, Professor, maybe we can talk about you know some of the other fun facts that you found doing your historical research, especially um, if any of the founding fathers were tipping some tea um, while they were <laughs> writing some of these documents, which would be fun. But uh, thank right. you very much. Hey, thank you. Great it's for joining us. Go check thank out the book, Did America Have a Christian Founding? He's leaving already. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back at you right after this. You're watching Liquid Lunch.